morning. Good morning, good morning. Welcome back to another episode this morning, episode 36th. Um, how did that ad go? <laughs> all, gold, all gold tomato, I think. It was uh, 36th. So that's where we are today. Welcome. I'm very happy again to be with you this morning. Uh, and uh, yeah, I've got, got a bit of a more of a practical thing that I want to talk about today. And at least it seems like today LinkedIn is working. Yesterday, if I must tell you what happened, all the things that happened yesterday, all the things I had to do, all the things that like, yes, it is just, it was absolutely crazy. Um, but anyway, that, that can be three episodes in itself, a real reality show, if you will. But um, today I want to talk about cloud storage uh, in particular. So not so much the cloud, uh, because the cloud is a very wide term and there's so many things. So I'll, I'll touch on that in the beginning, just what the cloud is, what it is all about. But then I want to go in particularly into cloud storage. And I'm only going to look at three of them, really, uh, the three most well-known ones uh, that most of us use. If you are using it, if you're not using it, it's something that you could consider. Uh, I'll try and highlight the, the things that you need to think about, you know, when you do decide to use these kind of uh, services. And uh, we will also look at, you know, how can we transfer big files? Because often, you know, you don't have the facility to actually don't have enough space to hold bigger files on, on these systems. And it's a pain to, to share links and things like that. So I will show you some of the options where you can transfer large files to people, but also a, a nifty little thing that you could use, uh, you know, so that people can send you files. So uh, some interesting stuff I want to get into. And uh, so that's what we're going to do this morning. And uh, on that note, let me say good morning. I'm going to start off on LinkedIn just simply because I left you hanging yesterday. I'm so sorry about that. Um, I still don't know what the issue was. Uh, I did contact um, LinkedIn. I haven't heard back from them as yet because all my videos were gone from all the previous episodes. Uh, I couldn't access the link at all for yesterday. So I don't know what happened. But anyway, good morning, Slonganani. Uh, nice to have you here, Sunny Bunani. Salut, Minel. Goedemorgen. Welkom terug. Bye, nice to meet you. So, to hear you. Good morning. Goedemorgen. You can have a good wind. Slicht is er nacht veel gestuur. Um, Gadzi Andi, welcome. You must maybe let me know how I can pronounce your name correctly. It's very important to me to pronounce people's names correctly. So, uh, you're welcome to let me know. Henny Bauer, good morning. Uh, nice to have you here. Ronnie Els, welcome terug. Nice to meet you. So, to hear Frans Hatten, good morning. Frans, uh, Razan, goedemorgen, Peter Strijdom, welcome back. And um, yeah, so let's see uh, what's going to happen. Uh, and over on uh, YouTube, uh, there's quite a number of people. I've got Kovis Klein, good morning, Kovis. Welcome, just I think just after 7 o'clock, you already said hi over here. I know you're in the office at 7 usually. Uh, then good morning, Terence. I am very envious of your rusk that you have with your coffee. Uh, I think we must upgrade the experience definitely and say that now you need to bring coffee and a rusk because now it's we're slowly moving into into later in autumn and winter. So yeah, you we need we need that. It it all goes together. Malcolm, good morning. Nice to have you back. Uh, thank you very much. You didn't say anything this morning about the number of subscribers, Malcolm. What's happening, man? We're on 308, 308. It drew by another seven yesterday. Uh, so thank you very much for that. Uh, maybe it was a little bit of help from LinkedIn when they didn't work. But um, thank you very much for, for everybody that's subscribing. Raymond, good morning. Uh, nice to have you with us. Uh, Almin Lotterang, very nice to have you here. Thank you very much for joining us. Anari, uh, all the way from uh, the Western Cape. Good morning. Nice to meet you. Sote, thank you. Uh, Arun, good morning. Welcome back. And the same with uh, Ian. Ian, welcome back. Good morning, Kevin. Uh, thanks to Franchises. I've started a WhatsApp broadcast list. Well done, Kevin. Sorry, I saw that you did send me some messages and, and so forth. I will get back to you. Um, I usually prepare before the show, so I don't always respond immediately, but uh, I will do so. And then uh, Tina's Brit says, Good morning from a lekker koude ochtend in Bloemfontein. So a lekker cold morning there in Bloemfontein. And uh, I know, like I'm from the Free State, so I grew up in Henneman. And uh, I know how cold it can get there. And uh, I worked in Bloom for a little bit in 2011, uh, and then I really experienced it because I started there the 1st of July. And uh, I, uh, July, not to you, it was, it was crazy. Uh, so, start the moment. Uh, Chad, good morning. Nice to have you here. See that you are getting up and running again. Uh, Bongi, good morning. Bongi, very nice to, to have you here. I did respond to your email and send you the things that you requested yesterday as well. Conrad Becker, uh, good morning. Welcome. 
nice of you to to join us wow it is amazing how many people are saying good morning over on youtube Kuketsu, good morning welcome back once more i really appreciate it thank you very much uh, raymond fisser more raymond by machta um yakuru's good morning uh here we go with another one yes mark uh, my friend welcome thank you very much for for joining us and uh, Homozo, you as well. Thank you so much. Uh, Neil Stram. Neil, I also responded to you somewhere in the midnight hour. and um, But yeah, I did do that. And Denise Snell. Welcome, Denise. Uh, nice to meet you. You the scene. Uh, Bye-bye, donkey. Then, uh, yeah, let's just quickly see. Uh, Neil Phillips. Good morning, Neil. Uh, had some discussions with you the last couple of days. It was very nice. Thank you very much uh, for, for, for that. Uh, Vessel Westeisen. Welcome, Vessel, my friend. Um, like, like we need to have that stake now. This whole lockdown thing needs to now get come to an end. I've been real, like, relaxed, you know, during this time about lockdown, and I don't feel like trapped in my own space. I, I don't feel trapped with my family. I just feel, you know, this is just I'm enjoying it. But now I'm getting to that point where, like, okay, now we 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 need to maybe be able to buy something or or have something. Um, Oh, thank you. <laughs> Katze Andy says that I'm pronouncing her name, or his, her name uh, very well. So thank you very much. I appreciate it. Richard Hand, good morning. Welcome. Um, and uh, Kirsty de Toy saying good morning. Good morning, Kirsty. Stefan Matia, good morning. Stefan, welcome back. And um, yeah, so uh, Neil is saying well done to Kevin for doing that WhatsApp list. All right. So um, yeah, let me get into, into all the things. Obviously, I'm going to skip the high and chat to one another and all of that. You know that by now. But please remember to subscribe. If it's your first time here, you find value today, then please hit that subscribe button on YouTube. It'll mean a lot. Over on LinkedIn, you can't subscribe, but you can connect with me. So you're more than welcome to do that if you if you want to do that. Um, I, uh, I appreciate it. And then um, also, please, if you can react to the video, uh, you know, hit the like buttons and the claps and the hearts and all that good stuff uh, over on LinkedIn. Just please hit the – I'm not getting many likes, so obviously there's, there's new subscribers all the time and a lot of conversation going on in the chats. But I need those likes. Please, if you can hit the like button over there as well, I'll be – it'll really help me a ton. And, um, yeah, on that note, uh, I guess the only other thing is to remind you – of um like the wrong way around today <laughs> the business assurance refresh i'm not going to say much about it today uh just a quick reminder if you want to subscribe and you're in a position to to book it's only 350 rand a person uh, please join us uh, i'll really appreciate it um, i will probably make the announcement tomorrow uh about a, a couple of other things that that i've planned yesterday was just too much i just couldn't get to everything but um i will definitely update you on on that all right so with all of that let me get into the show i like that let's get into the show yeah all right so let me make sure i've got everything here i can see everything there you go i feel a little bit out of my thing after yesterday that rattled my cage completely and that was not a nice feeling uh, uh the videos and everything luckily so just to give you an update everything is back uh so everything that was gone so i did submit a query to linkedin to say what happened that i contravene some rule uh because i'm all about rules so i usually don't try and do that unless it's really like a ridiculous thing i will challenge it but otherwise i stick to the rules and I don't know yet. Uh, it was just a glitch on their side, but luckily all my videos are back with all the views and all the clicks and all the comments and everything. It's back. It's back on my profile uh, because all of it was missing. So yeah, that totally rattled me and threw me off. Even though I've got all the all the videos and we've got everything is on YouTube anyway. You know, I think we've built a great community on both platforms, and I didn't really want to compromise that if it is something that was within my control. And uh, also, I was worried that like, if something went wrong on their side and I didn't don't have control over that, that now it is just lost, you know. Uh, wouldn't that be, like, weird in the context of what we're going to be talking about today? I hope you're having a good coffee and a, and a good tea. I've, I've been on the tea wagon this week. All right, so let's get started. Um, when we talk about the cloud, I don't know what do you understand around like what is the cloud and what is your definition for for the cloud and what do you think of when you hear the cloud 
And, you know, do we have this notion that, oh, the cloud is a safe place because it's been run by huge companies, so their security levels are a lot better than, than maybe ours in, in, in our offices or, or on our own computers, etc. You know, I don't know. What do we think about? Um, but in my view, a, the cloud is just servers that are not in your office. They are somewhere in what we call data centers. So they, they off-site, so they're not in your building. They're not in your business. But there's this these server farms. So server, you know, like a computer where uh, a lot of things can happen. And, and usually what people do, I think when we think about the cloud, we think about storage mainly, that we can save things there. But it's so much more than that. And I think the beauty about the cloud and that people are still not getting yet about what's going to happen. And, and that's the same thing when, you know, when this whole, all of this issue started with people working from home and so many people working from home, Obviously, I mean, not the thought was that not there wasn't sufficient things in place to be able to handle the increased traffic and the and, and everything that was going to happen. But a lot of the technologies like a Zoom or a uh, you know Microsoft Teams or whatever it is that that you that you prefer to use usually runs off these servers and they're being run from these data centers basically or from from the cloud. So to get more functionality, you know, in the past you had to go and buy another server or you had to upgrade your server, put in more hard drives, uh, you know, get a better, uh, a bigger CPU as a, a processing unit that can can uh, compute and, and can, can process so much more, uh, you know, a lot quicker. And those are the kind of things that I think in our mind is still how it works. But often you look at the cloud and people offering these kind of server farms, if you will, and I'm talking very basic plain language, They've got this capability already. It's literally like if I need more, I need to let them know. And it's almost like you're flipping a switch and, you know, now you've got more space. You've got more processing power. There's more memory. There's more. And you'll pay more for it. But here's the beauty about it is that you don't have to go out. I mean, if that server was in your room and you needed more things to be able to handle whatever it is that you need to handle, you had to invest in more hard drives, more memory, bigger CPU, getting somebody to come and upgrade and fix and, and you know load what needs to be loaded and install what needs to be installed. And we don't have to do that anymore. And that's the beauty about the cloud. I'm, I'm just sort of thinking about, I don't know what's going to happen the day when the internet goes down. I mean, what happened when the C cable got damaged? <laughs> we didn't have internet for how many weeks because they couldn't go out with the ships to, to go and fix it. You know, so that is the big, big, big vulnerability uh, or the big, big risk that we're taking by putting so many things into the cloud and onto the servers that are somewhere, you know, um, that, uh, I don't know, we, we need that, those contingency plans. What happens? You know, you do need local copies of everything you do. Uh, that you definitely need. But anyway, so, so that's a long story. But apart from the storage that you can do is that those servers can run full-on applications for you. So instead of the application that you need enough hardware or you need to have a big enough computer, basically, to run big software, you can actually run it from these servers where they have enough processing power and space and memory and whatever is required for that. And you're just interacting with it via your browser. But it works, okay? If you think about the applications you're using, the AdWorks, the X plans, and so forth. I mean, in the past, remember back in the day, when a program got updated, you had to go and get the disks and update, and it had to be done one machine at a time kind of thing. Now, with uh, the way we've been using it with web apps is that it's central. So when at work updates their program, tomorrow morning when you log in, all the, the users have got the latest one, everybody. So it's so much more efficient, so much more effective, and, and you know that there's, there's, there's very little downtime from, from that point of view. So I think, you know, these uh, cloud or the cloud, that's why it's become such a big thing. It's obviously a lot cheaper because now you only pay for what you want to use. You don't need the entire machine if you actually only needed this kind of thing, and you can now grow as your needs grow with that. Uh, and I think that those are important. And then obviously... Uh, the other one is the, you can run databases of this. So you can still have your own program and whatever, but you can put databases onto the cloud and you could connect via the internet. So it's basically just a lot of servers where you've got access to those servers, whether it's running an application, st storing your files and folders, or, or having a database and data that resides there. 
you can access that via the 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 internet and um that's really the thing and what they've also done is they have put data centers in different places so uh you know particularly there was a, at a point there was a story that as to call it a story because i haven't been able to confirm it since if anybody can tell me where to confirm this and whether you know this to be fact or not is that at, at a stage it was said that you cannot keep your for instance we can't use dropbox and we can't use google drive and OneDrive and those kind of things because those data centers is not in they are not in south africa they are offshore and because of poppy i think or somewhere in the in the phase act or code of course somewhere it says that you you're not allowed to store the data offshore but in my mind i guess you would just need authority if that's the right word from from clients uh, approval or permission from clients to say no it's fine you can use that it's fine with me my data may reside there so i don't know exactly what the story is around that it will be cool if anybody's got any insights or any anybody that could confirm that for us uh, that'll be great but um, ultimately you know there's there's a lot of things that we can do via using these services and now like, I mean, the big ones, uh, apart from the ones that I'm going to talk about today, there are these cloud services of which I think the two main ones, and I'm like, there's three main ones, really, because IBM has got one. I know Google has got one. But uh, you'll hear most often about AWS, which is Amazon Web Services, and you'll hear about Microsoft Azure. Uh, so those are the kind of things. And you can go check those things out. I mean, you can build little apps there if you wanted to, or you can. there's a lot that you can do there without paying for the service. So they give you some things that you can do for free. Uh, but that it really becomes next level. And that's why I just, I'm not going to focus on that kind of cloud and the things that you can do there. I want to look at more the storage side of things. And I'm going to look at really Dropbox. I'm going to start with that because most of the features I want to share with you is in Dropbox. Then OneDrive, which I use personally, we use OneDrive. And then I'm also going to quickly look at Google Drive. I'm not a big expert on uh, Google Drive, so we'll see how that goes. Uh, but I do want to sh show you that these three things are in essence, the same thing. And each one of them have got maybe something that the other one doesn't. So depending on your needs and how you like to work and also the environment that you use, whether that is really uh, to your advantage uh, from that point of view. All right. So let's start off with uh, Dropbox. And uh, to do that, I'm going to share my screen with you. Um, let me must say share audio. Let no. All right, so there we go. All right. So this is Dropbox on the web. Now, obviously, all of the applications that I'm going to share with you, so Dropbox, OneDrive, Google Drive, they all have got apps for your phone, for your tablet, and even for your PC or your Mac. There is a, an application that you can download so that you're able to sync uh, in between uh, everything, but also to use it uh, very easily. You don't have to log into the, the online version, but the online version is really where your files are residing in the cloud. All that's happening is that as you're doing something on your computer and you save it to that folder in your normal Windows Explorer, for example, the system will automatically upload it to the cloud, to your Dropbox account or your OneDrive account. It'll upload it there. And then if you've got any other devices that are also linked to your account, it will automatically put a copy of that file onto each one of those of those devices. And that's the power. I mean, I remember with my iPhone, you know, I had to plug in a cable if I wanted to transfer, if I wanted to transfer images and videos and things across. And it's it's a pain because now iTunes wants to run through their entire process. Uh, you can do that over Wi-Fi as well. Uh, you know, if you have a Mac and those kind of things, it's easy because they've got AirDrop and AirPlay and Air, I don't know what else. Uh, so that makes it very easy. But if you're a normal Windows user, then that just doesn't work. And from my point, uh, what, what I wanted, what I figured out over time, it's so much quicker by putting, if I've got a file, let's say like I'm going to show you today, I've, I took a picture just before we started, and I'm going to put that into onto my, my OneDrive or, my, or, or, or Dropbox for that matter. And I'll show you how quickly it is to then get it onto my laptop to be able to show it to you in the live stream as well. You know, so it's so much easier by doing that. Um, a lot of people are also using Dropbox and OneDrive and Google Drive to back up their pictures and their videos from their phone. Um, so, you know, there's there's many uses for this. And it started off as a personal thing. It's, it's a place to keep your personal documents. I think the other benefit of using something like this is that these things don't have to reside on your computer anymore. So if you have a laptop, 
that maybe doesn't have a lot of space if you've got an SSD drive, for example, that boots up very quickly. Those things tend to be small. You know, they, uh, they, they're just over 200 gigs or sometimes 500 gigs, but it is a problem for, for a lot of people. So if you've got a lot of files on there, it starts clogging up that hard drive. Now, um, you know, and, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take you through sort of what you get with, with each one of these. And I'm pretty sure that most of you will know about these services already. So with Dropbox, so let me just focus on Dropbox for a second. With Dropbox, you get two gigabytes of data. So two gigabytes uh, that you, if you've got the free account, you can upgrade at any time. They've, all, they've got a personal version and they've got a business version. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm just going to sort of show you the, the personal version because most of the things I want to show you is actually in there. But you could upgrade at any time and pay like, I don't know, 100 rand a month and then you'll get uh, more uh, space and then it goes up. So the more space you want, the more expensive it is and you have to pay monthly or annually for that. So uh, that, that you can do. Um, and as I go through the others, I'll obviously tell you what they've got as well. But what you could do with Dropbox, I'm not sure if you can still do it, but when they started off, if I if you referred people that signed up for Dropbox, you would get an additional 500 megs or something of space. So over time, I think I've built up, uh, so I've got about 6.8 gigs or something of space uh, with Dropbox that I'm not paying for. So this is a completely free account. So everything I'm going to show you is available in the free account. And what you could do with Dropbox as well is it doesn't have to be your full-on storage. You can just use this to sort of get files between computers. Uh, and there's, there's a few things that I, that I want to show you um, in that sense. Um, I think when it comes to, to these things, um, you know, what is important is to know that they can integrate with applications and they do integrate with applications quite well. Dropbox is the one that is not really linked to a specific product offering or a specific software house or anything like that. OneDrive is Microsoft, Google Drive is Google. So Dropbox is really a standalone, I think, offering. So they don't really mix with the others, but they do integrate very well with them. When I use my Office 365, and or it's now called Microsoft 365, but when I use that, it will ask me, where do you want to save? And it brings up Dropbox as, as, a, as an example. Whether I do it on my phone or whether I'm doing it here, those are the options that, that are coming up. So, um, yeah, so, so let me just get quickly into, into some of the things here. And the reason I'm not starting on my PC as such is because I don't want to waste time. I want to show you what is possible. Some of the things I'm going to show you is not possible on the app on your, on your, on your computer. You have to go to the online version. Uh, but I'll I'll elude you or just make you aware of that as we as we go through. So all I've done here, I'm logged in uh, into my account. You can view your account here on the right hand side. I obviously haven't added a photo, uh, but there you can you can uh, you click there. Yeah, you can see you can upgrade your settings and you can even install the app directly from here uh, if you wanted to. All right, but that's not what I want to show you. So I am here on the left hand side. You've got this this menu. With home uh, is where I am at the moment, so it's giving me suggested from my activity. So usually the last things that I that I accessed, it then gives me my recent list down here, um, and then also if I've started anything or anything like that. I can maybe make this a little bit bigger um, so that you can see more easily. Okay, so let me do it like that. <clears throat> you see, uh, as I'm getting older, I'm realizing I need to make things bigger on the screen. Right, so let me just run you through here on the left-hand side. So you've got files. Obviously, this is where you will go to view your files. And um, let me just let it load there. So uh, when I go to files, here you can see uh, all the folders and the files and everything. So you'll use it exactly like you use your Explorer or, or whatever it's called um, on your PC. Uh, you can access the files and folders here. Uh, by seeing here, you'll see a little like two users kind of icon on a file if it is already shared with someone, you know. So there's a lot of things here that you that you can see, and you can do everything that you want from this particular um, place. I just want to make this a little bit smaller because it feels like it's going too slowly. All right, so so that is sort of that. If I go to shared, I can then easily see what I've what I've shared. Because obviously you know that you can create a link and you can share that then out with others so that they can access the file or download the file. And you've got some form of control over what they will be able to do. 
Uh, I often share entire file, uh, folders with somebody. It makes it easy. And then everything that's relevant to that conversation or that specific project or action, I would put into that folder. You don't have to share it every single time. If they've got access to a folder, they will have access to everything that's inside that folder. So very important just to know that because sometimes maybe that's not what you intend to do, uh, but but that you can do. But here you can see everything that, that has been, been shared. Then file requests I'll get to in a second. And then there's your deleted files. With Dropbox, you've got a certain amount of time to recover some of your deleted files. Uh, because sometimes you delete them by mistake or, or maybe, you know, there's some other things that happen uh, or somebody else is deleting files and you're able to recover them from there. All right. So um, basically just what I want to run through quickly is, um, first of all, that, uh, you know, we can decide what we want to sync as well. Uh, so let me just see if I need to open that over here. Let me just see. All right. Sorry, guys. I just want to make sure that we, this thing, it feels like this is loading a bit slowly. So I hope there's not an issue. All right, but let's see. Um, so a few things here on the, on the right-hand side. When I'm into files, yeah, I can obviously upload files or folders, uh, whatever I want to do. I can create new folders. I can create a new shared folder. So it means that if I create a new shared folder that there isn't a folder already that I want to share. This is I want to create a new folder and share it at the same time. Um, here I can request files. I'm going to get to that because that is one of the awesome features. And then also um, I can rewind Dropbox. And here's my folder history so that I can see it. I want to show you that as well, you know, when you get into a file where you can view the version history of a of a um, of a file. All right, you'll note here when I go and I'm going to use this a awesome day. That's usually what I use for demonstrating this. Um, you see, as soon as I hover over that file uh, over that folder, I get different options here, and here I can decide if I want to share it. Okay, share with Dropbox, or do I want to connect apps, or what do I want to do? Here I can go open, so I can show the file in in in, in File Explorer. Uh, so you can just click on it. It will open it uh, to, to the local version. And then if I go to the ellipses there, I, there's quite a number of things that I can actually do. And um, I can, on based on this folder, because it's a folder, I can share this folder here. Okay. I can download the folder. I can send it with a transfer, which I, I'm waiting to get into. And then I can request files for this folder. And that's the, those are the, the sort of the two or three powerful things that I want to show you. And then there's a whole host of other things that one could do. Okay, so let me let me start off with with this um, to say, well, this is awesome day. I'm going to go into into that. I'll show you. So there we are. There's some documents in here that I've that I've used before, and um, you can see that that there's some things there. So if I just go back, and then we go an awesome day, and let's just say that because you can have you can create like an inbox if somebody needs to send you files you know some people are technologically challenged uh they battle to you know if they want to email you and this file is 10 megabytes big it is sometimes an issue i see this is becoming less of an issue these days but it 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 is usually a, a, an issue if you've got this big file and to explain to them how to compress that file and make it smaller and or change the, the resolution at which they're scanning or change it from full color to grayscale or black and white it's just, you know, it's just not, not going to happen. So what you can do here, and this is awesome. I don't know if you know that you can do this. Um, you can click there, and then you can say request files. So you go to request files. And um, let me just wait for that to, to open up. And this is very, very cool. So here you can give your request a name. Uh, so here, let's just say... Um, uh, latest figure documents. Okay. Some compliance person is going to find me. Uh, latest, um, and then let's say if audit to way. Okay. So there we go. So this is the folder that we want to use. Okay. Um, because I don't have a paid account, I can't set an expiration. What you can do is you can do this request, but then you can have it, uh, you can set when that, when this request must expire so that somebody can't use it anymore. So then you go next. All right, and you already saw there in the background that it's creating it there. This is the link. 
that it's going to do. So I'm going to send myself an email because I want to show you what this looks like. You can add an optional message. I, uh, let's say, okay, um, boom. and I can send that. So you can either copy that link and just send the link to the person that you are requesting the file from, uh, or you can do it in, in this way. Okay, so while I'm just waiting for my email program to open up, I will I will have a look there. I'm going to show you the email that comes through, what it looks like, and what it looks like then from that person's point of view when they are when they then want to send you the file and how brilliant this is. Um, and it's safe and secure. They don't need a Dropbox account. They don't need to log in or anything like that. You know, usually if you want to share a file, people would need to register at least a free account for Dropbox. But uh, with this, you don't need a Dropbox account at all. Uh, so that's not necessary. <clears throat> all right. So let me see what else. Um, just plainly, I'm going to come back to this request file as soon as the as the email has come through. I will show you that. It's already come through on my phone. I just want to, want to show you what it looks like. But um, just if you just want to plainly share a file. Um, so let's just say I want to go into Awesome Day. This is a little bit less real time than what I'm used to. So just bear with me. I'm not going to go into as much detail in some of the others because if I show you how it works in Dropbox, you're going to get a very good sense of how it would work in the other ones. And I'll just give you some reasons about why you may want to use some of the other options over Dropbox or over Google Drive or, or whatever the case is. So if I want to want to share this file, for example, this was Donna winner tickets that, that we bought back. Uh, back in the day, um, you can click on the ellipsis and you can go share. And in your in your on your computer, it's even easier. You will just right click on the file, and I'll show you that in a second what that looks like. And here you can say, well, who you wanna wanna share it with. Um, so, um, yeah. So let me just share it with myself, basically. And you can add a message, okay? And here, very importantly. Here you can choose what the person are able to do um, in, in terms of this. So here is the file settings. Anyone can edit. You know, what do you want to do? Um, what is the link if you only want them to view? So those are the kind of settings that you can, can, can choose so that somebody can only access and view the file and read the file and not actually go and edit it. So if you give somebody edit rights, then they are able to change and delete files uh, in, in that sense as well. So we don't really want to want to do that do we all right so <clears throat> this is the email that has now come through let's just see here we go ha, ha, ha. there it comes okay so this is the email that has come through let me just download the pictures Alrighty, so there we've got, um, this is what it looks like when it comes through. It says, please upload files for latest FICA documents, whatever that name is that you gave there at the top. Um, France de Toy is requesting files, so it'll have your name there. Um, and this is what we're requesting. You can upload the files securely to Dropbox so that Francho can see them, even if you don't have an account. How beautiful is that? So they will click here on the upload files. Let's actually move this to the side, but I'll do that in a second so I can show you just how quick this is. Okay, so I'm going to do this. So this is what it looks like. It's very simple. There it is. Francho wants you to add files. This is what we want. Okay. And then all they need to do is to say, well, choose from computer, like anything else. They would go click on, on choose from computer. Okay, it'll open up what you want to do. So I'm just going to somewhere in my downloads folder, just choose a file. Um, so let's just say it is, uh, I'm just going to upload this picture, for example, just to show you. Um, but I want to show you if I go there. So keep an eye here on, on this side um, because we're uploading to this folder, remember. I can just go open. 
okay? It'll say this is the file. They can add more than one file at a time, okay? And then they can just go upload. So then it says it's uploading. And then you'll see here it's done. And there it's already in the drop there. It came into the into the into that folder from which we created the request. So you can have this inbox for a client specifically to go directly into your uh, Dropbox folders. So very, very easy. And then I get a notification um, from Dropbox again in my email saying that, uh, you know, whoever I sent this to uploaded the image. And there you go. And now I can go and see the files that I want to. So you even get a notification when somebody does act on that request. So it's really, really an awesome feature. And I don't know if you know about this and whether you use this. Uh, I know there are people that, that are definitely doing that. Um, but um, but those are some of the things that I think has made a huge difference since I found out about that because it's so much easier. And, oh, you have to create a Dropbox account or you have need this. Need, no, no, no. Just there you go. Very easy. And this is something as far as I know that OneDrive does not do. I'm not sure about Google Drive, but definitely the other ones that I use don't offer this. So for this kind of thing, I, I would use this. There's also other things that we can use, uh, which I will get to in a, in a second uh, as well. All right, so that is basically all the Dropbox stuff. Uh, the one last thing I want to show you maybe is just uh, if you if you go into <clears throat> if you go to to your Dropbox folder, all right, and you go into any of the of the um, where's something that I can go into. Let me just go into into this folder. If you've got any file in here. Okay, and uh, you've worked on that file, and this is one of the things that makes Dropbox great because one of the problems that you sit with is the, if there's different versions of a file. So if you go onto any file that is in within your Dropbox structure in, on your machine and you right-click on it, this thing feels so slow today. Come on. All right, so <clears throat> here you see you can go share directly from here because this is all the Dropbox things you can do in the context menu that shows up. So you can share it, so it will create a link, and you can say what must happen with that link. You can send it with a transfer. This is the other thing. So now you can send it with a transfer. So instead of putting it in your Dropbox folder and having to create a link and send it, this is just sending the file. Um, so And I'll show that to you, to you uh, when we talk about one of the other options. You can just copy the Dropbox links, and here you've got something called version history. So <clears throat> let's just see what that, what that looks like because it will open Dropbox on the web. And it will then show you the version history. <clears throat> All right. So here you can see there's only one version. So, But if I were to change this file, it will show me all the versions over here. Now, with the latest Office 365 applications, you do get version history in, that, in those files as well. Uh, if you save those files to OneDrive, then and it, it has autosave and those kind of things enabled, then you'll be able to have version control over there as well. But this is great to have it within something like Dropbox itself. So I've, I think I'm going to stop there because I don't want to get too, too technical uh, about this. <clears throat> but this is quite an important, I think, function that I wanted to sort of share with you and uh, the whole idea about, you know, how do I get things uh, on you? All right, so let me just quickly see because uh, I haven't been seeing my screen here uh, if there are any... So these things I can close now. So I'm going to close all the applications. Alrighty. So just have um, see. Uh, Kevin says, uh, I have all three. We are. What are the reasons of using multiple cloud storages? Well, usually because you run out of space on on one of them, and then you want more free space, and we're not willing to pay for space. Then <laughs> you start using all three. And sometimes your clients prefer to use a particular one, but in my opinion, you should be choosing one uh, and, and stick with that if that is what you want to use. Uh, the big question, I think, is really that we need to think about also security, you know, because you can't get into it unless you can log into the website. But the problem is when these files reside on your computer and you don't lock your computer when you leave your computer, then anybody's got access because it works like a normal file structure on your machine. You know, so from that point of view, they could still access things, but they need access to your actual computer. And, uh, you know, but on the other hand, as I say, uh, you can, uh, it, is, it is very safe from, from, from that because you need to log in. You can't just access files. When you share a link, then people will get access to that link. They don't necessarily have to log in um, on a program. They will just view, but they, then they will only be able to download it. You know, the moment you give them editing rights, they need to be able to log in. 
for example, on Google Drive, you cannot give somebody access to edit unless they have a Google account. Uh, so so those there, there are certain things that are in place uh, for that as well. Okay, let me just see quickly um, <clears throat> over on LinkedIn. Um, so let's see. Dropbox Premium offers two terabyte of space for about 230 rand a month. Yeah, it's not bad at all. It's very, very good. Um, and another useful uh, function is Smart Sync, which allows you to choose files or folders that only get stored online. You retrieve your, because that's one of the things, Hugo, I think that's a very good uh, tip that, uh, because you can choose what is being stored on your machine and what will be exclusively stored just on the on the web version. And then uh, you can just then access those files when you do need them on your machine. I'm going to show you that in OneDrive because I like the way that OneDrive actually does that. Uh, but that is definitely a very important feature. I know um, Razan also uses uh, Dropbox extensively. Um, so I know that. Uh, I used to be a big Dropbox fan until I started using OneDrive. So now I'm more onto OneDrive. And I'll share my reasons for that. It's not like it's better. I think Dropbox in many aspects are better than OneDrive. But it's just because of what I get with part of my, my subscription. Uh, that's the reason. All right. Um, yes, yeah, so Neil says, so it's a great feature, request file. Thank you. It's my pleasure. And then uh, Slonganani is asking, can we share from OneDrive? Yes, we can. So I'm going to get into OneDrive. I'm not going to get into as much detail as I just did uh, in terms of, 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 uh, of Dropbox. <clears throat> so let me move there to OneDrive. So you'll see that OneDrive is basically the same. The only difference is that with OneDrive, if you create a free account, you get five gigabytes and not two. And then you can upgrade that as well. Uh, you have the option to, to do that. But if you've got any form of Office subscription, you get one terabyte of, of um, well, not all their subscriptions. I must just, uh, it's not true. Um, I think if you only have email, you don't necessarily get OneDrive, one terabyte of space. I think you may get less, uh, but but it doesn't matter. You can you get at least your five gigabyte. And uh, if you do certain things, they will increase it to 15, I think. But um, from that point of view is that, and that's why I started using OneDrive, is simply because I have an have Office subscription. I get one terabyte of space for this. I mean, one terabyte, and I'm not paying extra for it. So that's the, that's the, the, the beauty of OneDrive. And then because I use Office extensively, you know, when you save those files to OneDrive versus saving them to Dropbox, you get all sorts of other functionality and things that, can ha that, that they do and give you uh, as part of that functionality because it stays within the ecosystem. So OneDrive is, a, if you work in the Microsoft ecosystem extensively, then OneDrive is definitely a very good option to, to look at. Um, here you can see this is what it looks like. Um, I've already uh, also created an awesome day uh, folder over here. And uh, you could then, you know, do exactly the same thing. So <clears throat> if you click on it, it'll take you inside the folder. So there you can see. And from here, what is nice is that I can right click, I can say new, and you, you can do some of this in, in Dropbox as well, by the way, but I could go Word document. Even if you've got the free version, you'll be able to do a Word document or an Excel spreadsheet or something like that, because what it will do, and this is one of those examples where the application is running from the server, it's running from the cloud. It will actually open a new document here with Microsoft Word, and you'll see that there uh, it'll open, uh, you know, when it's done with its vacation. I'll get back to that. But then you can, you'll be able to edit the document like you would if you had Microsoft um, Word on your machine. And you can do it from anywhere on, on any application for that matter. But there you've got this. It's already showing the document is just created. There's the thing you see. It looks almost like Word. You won't have all the functionality of the actual Word document because online has got certain limitations. The same with Excel. You can't do macros and VBA and, and things like that. But uh, in terms of this, I mean, I can I can type and say what I need to. So there you go. It's a document. It automatically saves. You'll see here at the top it's saying saving. Um, I can still go here and say file. And I can save as. I can give it a name. Okay. So that's brilliant. Here is where in the drop down, you'll be able there to see the, the document name. <clears throat> so let me just say, um, I'll just call it something else. Okay, so then the name has changed, and then uh, it says where the location is, and here you can see previous version. So if I were to change this, if I now went on and I said, bam, bam, thank you. Okay, so if I did that, uh, it's obviously now saving, and it will say, well, it is saved. 
in a second. If I then just go to the drop down and say previous versions, the same almost as the Dropbox uh, version history. So it's the same functionality. So here you can see there is a current version, which I can see there, or there is an older version that if I click on that older version, it will show me what it looked like at that point. So every time it saves, it's creating a version. And um, that works that works very well. And you can restore or download a previous version if you wanted to go back to that specific um, version. All right. Well, there we've got it. Uh, so we've got that. Yeah, on the left-hand side, you'll see there's your recent files that you worked with, uh, your photos, then what is shared. So you can see all the folders and documents that you've shared, but also what has been shared with you. So here you'll have uh, shared by me. So this is who I've shared it with. And then links OneDrive sent to me uh, kind of thing. And then other people that have shared different things with you. Also your recycle bin. And then over here, you've got all the PCs that are linked to this particular OneDrive account. Uh, and you'll be able to, to say what needs to happen with that. Um, and that is basically um, OneDrive. I just want to see if there's something specific I wanted to show you. Oh, yeah. the um, So let me open the this again. So now if I go to OneDrive, okay. So now if I go to, to, to OneDrive and I go into any of these um, folders, for example. <clears throat> so what? Uh, which one shall I use? Um I just want to see quickly. Um, so let's just do this. Uh, but I don't think this one. I actually did this last night. So let me go. I want to go to. I'll show you. Um, where is it? My videos. Videos, videos. Okay. So I've got a lot of different videos and things that we've got here. So let me go into the relief measures. You'll see if it is sync to your machine and it's downloaded to your machine it'll have a green tick like that if it's in the cloud and it's not on your machine it'll have a little cloud there and when it is still has to sync it's got those little arrows that that will show you that um so let me just go i don't want to go into vcf but here you can see so for example and i don't, don't really want to do it now because it's going to going to clog up my my internet speed but here you can see that of all of the videos and the things that I've done, so this, these are all the episodes that we've done for Virtual Coffee with Francha. So they are all in the cloud. They are not on my machine. I changed them last night so that they only reside on OneDrive in the cloud so that it doesn't take up space over here because this was this was about 60 gigabyte of space already. So now the, the first four there, uh, the one about the advisor websites and the one we did yesterday, <clears throat> if they've got this green tick, it means that they're on your machine. So I just quickly want to show you, if you wanted to change this, you would just right-click the file and say, here's, the, here's the, all the OneDrive stuff, and you will say free up space. Now, people are usually very afraid to click on that because they think I'm going to delete something, and you don't want to do that. So free up space in this case is just removing it from your machine, but it's still there. You can still see it. It's like it's there, but it's not really there. The moment I double-click it, it will first have to download it. So the positive is that it saves you space on your hard drive. The negative is, is that if you don't have internet access when you need it, then you won't have access to it. Um, so, so those are just the two trade-offs. But if you are, let's say, going on a plane, you can, with or without snakes, you can you can decide to download the files that you are going to use before you go. It's as simple as just, you know, either double-clicking it to open it, or you will just right-click the file that you want, and you will just go, always keep on this device. So you can do this for a folder, or you can do this per file, uh, and you've got control over that. So Dropbox, uh, the, the syncing and the things that that uh, Yihu and Razan was referring to basically works on the, in the same in the same way so from this point of view i mean if if i um i can't show you that because it's i mean this is generic stuff but i can't show you the things like our uh, tax line stuff is it's on here we've we've got that shared with everybody that works on it because we are all in different places you know but it's all central and when you work on a file you know that that is the latest file what i can't show you right now is that even if if the if the file resides on one drive and it's a word document then uh, myself and my wife can work on the same document at the same time. You can even see what other people are doing in the document, the same as Google Docs, really, uh, from that point of view. All right. So let me close that. Um, so here you can see the, the older version, which has, was before we added anything uh, in there. Uh, but that's really what you what you can, can do with a version history. 
All righty, then Google Drive, as I say, I'm not a specialist in Google Drive. It works basically the same. It's got its own little nuances and things that they want and that they can do and that they can't do. But again, here you've got My Drive. You can set up folders and different things there that you want. Um, usually all your forms, all your Google Docs, all of those, you know, Google Sheets, all of it, they go into Google Drive automatically. Um, you do get 15 gigabytes of data on the free one. And then if you want more space, then, then you can purchase that. Uh, but that is really up to you and, and in terms of what you what you may need. And um, when would I choose Google Drive over anything else? Well, again, like Kevin asked, why I have more than one is if you want additional space or you want to choose like my, my photos I want to put onto Google Drive, for example, and my work documents for work purposes, I only use one drive. So you could segregate sort of the different uses, if you will, between different um, different cloud storage options. But, um, you know, it, if you are extensively working with G Suite, uh, so you're using Google Docs and Google Sheets, you're paying for that, then obviously Google Drive will make sense. And I think in that sense, you also get more storage than, than just 15 gigs. So depending on which environment or ecosystem you find yourself in, you maybe want to consider using their cloud storage offering because it just works better with the rest of the applications usually that uh, are available. Here you can see, you can also see what was shared with, with me. So what was shared with you, uh, these are other things that other people have shared with, 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 with me, your recents, your start, uh, and all of that you can see. You can see I don't really use uh, Google uh, or Google Drive uh, that much. So, yeah, so it works the same. It's got an app for your phone and all of it. So I'm not going to get into that. I've got some other things that I really rather want to get to and that I really want to talk about um, in, terms of, uh, in terms of this. Okay. So some of the things that I want to talk about is automation. Um, it is possible because everything sits on a server in the cloud, it is possible to link and to connect with this, with files, with folders, with data, with all sorts of stuff. And you can automate a lot of things in that in that space. I mean, it's possible. Okay, I haven't been able to get it right yet, but it is definitely possible. There is functionality out there that you are able to, when a file is created in a specific folder in Dropbox, for example, to automatically move that over to OneDrive, for example. You can do things like when a an email comes in and it's got attachments, that those attachments are moved automatically to your Dropbox or your OneDrive or things like that. Um, you saw the file transfers that we did when that comes in. I mean, that's a form of automation as well. So it is definitely possible. And sort of the, 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 the two services that I usually go to for any of these things, and I'll be keen to hear if there are others that you maybe know of, but the one is Zapier, Z-A-P-I-E-R. So Zapier, they give you some free functionality not a lot, but then you need to pay for that service. But that make, can make your life so easy. And you can really connect a lot of things. And you can have multiple steps. So you can say, I'm just like, uh, um, as an example, an email comes in. So that's the trigger. So it will say an email is received. And then you can go, like, when that email is received and there's attachments, move those attachments to Google Drive. When it hits Google Drive, send an email to whatever. So those are the kind of things with, that you can build. That's not necessarily part of the applications that you've got, but because everything resides in the cloud, you can connect these things and you can have different actions that are triggered automatically because of that. Microsoft has got their own version. I think it's now called Power Connected or something, but it used to be called Microsoft Flow. Um, and, um, and that's also, it's not as extensive as Zapier, um, but it's got some functionality and particularly within the Microsoft ecosystem, they've got quite a nice... Uh, offering and templates and things that you can just use to get things done very easily. Uh, but those are some of the things that you can do. So automation is definitely a big thing that you would want to consider uh, while you want to work in the cloud as well uh, because of what else you can actually do. And the main thing for me is like, and it's not to say that if the, if the stuff is there, you've got a backup. Don't see the cloud as a backup, okay? Um, you, you've got to have specific services for backups as well. Um, I don't think you should just trust that, oh, it's with Google. They will back up my stuff. No, they don't. Go read their terms and conditions, uh, Microsoft, all of them, Dropbox. Um, you know, although they do certain things, um, it's not necessarily that they've got backups of, of everything. Uh, they still make that your responsibility as far as I've got it. You can correct me if I am wrong. Then transferring large files. And here maybe I can show you just very, very quickly 
There is a tool that I learned about that maybe uh, many of you know. It works similarly to the, the file request in, in Dropbox, but it is called WeTransfer. So WeTransfer, very, very simple. Here you can add your files. Who do you want to send it to? Your email address, and you give it now. If you've got an account and you, you've signed in, you can create a free account. You can send up to two gigabyte bytes of data, two gigabytes per transfer. So you can do that. You can select an entire folder and upload all the files, or you can select uh, you know, individual files that you want to send to someone. So what happens is very simply that um, if I put it in here and I say, well, these are the files that I want to send, It'll ask me to confirm my email if I'm not logged in. If I'm logged in, it won't do that. And it will just send an email to the other person to say, well, Francho has sent you these uh, files, and they can click on it and download it. So it's not an actual email. It's just an email with a link. So pretty much the same as Dropbox is. Uh, so this is another solution that you can use uh, if you don't want to use the, the, the whole file request. But what I like about the file requesting is that you you are now asking somebody to send it to you. But remember, I could send a document with Dropbox Transfer if I wanted to. So Dropbox Transfer works the same as WeTransfer. Uh, but WeTransfer worked well. Um, I've got a few people who send stuff to me, and I've started using it, sending things like if I create content, like yesterday for Capital Legacy, I created content, sent them the videos last night using WeTransfer because it's so much easier. It's a lot quicker. I don't have to go create things, upload them, create links, send it to them. It's just like, there you go. And I think the link expires in a week and then uh, they can't access those files anymore. So this is particularly where you don't want somebody to have access to a folder on your machine or on your Dropbox or on that. You just want to send it to them. So what you are doing, you're uploading the files to WeTransfer. So just know that, that the files go there. So be careful about the type of information that you want to be sending around. Uh, but this is something if you want to send just informational kind of things and not personal information and so forth, uh, this can be a, a good option. And that is why if you if you want, want things like ID documents, proof of banking, proof of address, I would rather use the request file function via Dropbox um, because you only send it to that person and they need to take the action to upload it and it goes directly into that folder on your machine that you've designated. This, I don't know where it goes. It goes to WeTransfer. WeTransfer's got it. They send it, and a week later, I hope that it gets deleted. So I'm not 100% sure how this works. There's also a pro version. If you want to do more and send more and have more control over a lot of things, then uh, you can you can do that. Um, so, yeah, you can see here on the pro version, you can say when it must be deleted. Whoops. Uh, sorry, um, you can say when it must be deleted, and then you can also set a password for this so that somebody needs the password to be able to, to do the download. But that's only in the in the pro version. All right, so that is uh, that about uh, transferring large files. And then I guess the answer, and, and I think some of you already alluded to this, like how do I choose now which one to use? And I've already answered, I think, that a couple of times during the session. From my point of view, it is like, look at the ecosystem that you're using. So if you're a Microsoft user, consider OneDrive, or they, they've also got something called SharePoint, uh, which is more secure and more specific to that. Um, and you can control a lot more things. And I see these days they are making SharePoint available through many of their business uh, subscriptions. So that can be definitely an option. That's the next level up from OneDrive, in, in my opinion. Uh, so, but if you're in Microsoft, try and be in Microsoft. If you are in Google, try and be in Google. And then you can use something for, for Dropbox that, uh, you know, it's just easy for people to send you information and things like that. That is not complicated and they don't require to create accounts and log in and do all that, that, that good stuff. Uh, then the, what I wanted to show you is just quickly the, um, the picture that I took because I want to show, share this with you for, for two reasons. Um, so the one is obviously because I want to show you what my studio actually looks like. So what you're seeing here on the screen and what it really looks like inside here, I want to show you that. I just want to show you, so at the moment, the, the picture is just on my phone. So I haven't uploaded it yet. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the uh, OneDrive app and um, maybe I can I can do it like like this. So you can see as it happens. Let me just show you that I am doing it while we're talking. So I'm going to upload it to this A Awesome Day folder. So I will go into OneDrive on my phone. Okay, I will go into that folder. I will say that I want to add. So I want to upload. I choose the photo. So there's the photo. 
Okay, I say done. It says uploading file one of one. It says it's uploaded. You can see, I want to point with my finger. <laughs> you see that there now shows a one there. Okay, so let's just see. And there you see there's the picture already in there. Uh, and what I want to do now is to, to sort of show you what this uh, looks like uh, on the screen, just how easy it is for me to get this stuff uh, into here. The only thing is now this needs to sync, obviously, from my uh, to, to my desktop. Um, so let me go there. And for me, this is just the amazing thing about, you know, how quickly things do go and um, how easy it makes it for me to be able to, to use it like this. So I, um, but obviously, <laughs> it hasn't synced yet to my machine. So let me just say keep. There you go. All right. So there we go. So let me see if I can get it. Sorry, guys. So I just want to, I really want to show you just how easy this is and how, how beautiful it works. I hope it's going to work now because usually it does. I don't have any issues. Um, where are you? There you are. Just want to see. So it doesn't sync yet to, well, it says on the one hand, it says it has sync. I just can't see it. Um, let me go in there. If this doesn't work, it's fine. I'll move on. Um, but I do want to show you. I mean, you could see that picture on there. Um, let me just see quickly. So OneDrive and an awesome day. It is there. Yep, it is on my machine. I don't know why it's not um, coming into the uh, into the file itself. But let me show it to you then like this. It's fine. So this is what the studio really looks like. Um, this is the actual amount of light that is in here. Um, so funny enough, if you look at myself on the screen here, you know, this is what the, what the setup looks like. Uh, I usually battle with getting my cables and things neat, but you'll see that the that this has got wheels so I can move this table back and forth. Uh, but this is really my whole setup. And you can see the amount of lights that we've got in here that's going on. It's on at the moment. I took this picture just before I came to sit down. So this is what it looks like. But then playing with the camera settings, I get this, um, I get this look and feel which is quite different, and it, I think it gives a nice vibe. Uh, it was quite a mission to make sure that I've got enough light on my face so that I am separated from the background, but that's really what it is like. I know a lot of you have asked uh, about, like, you know, what is my setup, what does it look like, and, and so on. But that is sort of my story for today. Uh, thank you very much for joining me. I don't see any more comments or questions or anything. I'll just pop on over quickly to LinkedIn and see what it says there. Um, if there is anything... So, um, so Neil says, I'm paranoid by, uh, by backing up to both Dropbox and OneDrive. Anyone else doing this? Uh, I used to do that. I stopped doing that. But it is a good thing. You have a redundancy plan. Eh? If it's not there, it's just like make sure that they're always in sync. That, that's the, 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 the challenge. A lot of people do offline backups. So I see Razan is also saying. And there are some other sp specialized backup options that, that you've got available. But the problem with offline backups is that You've got to have a process. If you've got a team of people and they can do it's part of their task to do it every single day, it works well. But yeah, if you don't and you only back up once a month and there are critical stuff that is taking place every day, you're going to lose a week or a day or a month's worth of work uh, if you don't do that. Whereas I prefer things to be automated so that I know it's always there. But it's you know, to, to get that service and they're quite expensive. Um, but, um, but that is really the, the, the way to go possibly. Alrighty. So thank you very, very much. Um, that is my story for today. And, uh, I really appreciate you spending your time with me and it wasn't such an exciting one, I think, but hopefully there was some value and uh, I'll be back <laughs> with some more interesting and, and, and thought provoking, uh, episodes. And, uh, but in this case, I thought like, let, let me share some of this with you. Some of the things that's currently in my mind is I want to look at value pricing. 
I want to look at um, a few other sort of solutions that are available. Next week, I've got one guest, possibly two. I'm waiting to hear. Um, and um, yeah, so so we'll see how this how this goes. If you've got any ideas for topics or things you want me to discuss or you want me to talk about that will help you in your business and will help you with your conversations with your clients or your marketing, whatever is, touches your business, let me know. You can send me a WhatsApp. Most of you are now on my WhatsApp list. Thank you very much for that. But you're welcome to get in touch with me. Send me ideas and thoughts and all of that. I welcome it. I really appreciate it. And on that note, thank you very much. I hope you have a fantastic Friday. I can't believe it's Friday. I didn't even speak about the president's speech. But what the hell? This is gone and have a good weekend. Thank you very much. I appreciate you all and I wish you well. And we'll chat soon. <laughs>